Welcome back to Force Education, this is Ant. Today, we're going to be talking about Mullen. Mullen going the ticker, M-U-L-N, has been a bit of a common topic, and I did start talking about it where it was closer to the lowers of around 60 cents or so, um, or around 50 cents or so. And so far, it's almost hitting around $3. And we're going to talk a little bit about the technical analysis in this video. And as well, if this is the first time ever you see Mullen, you're going to be getting a good idea about this stock. Now, Mullen itself has different products. So you have the Mullen 5, which is kind of the Tesla competitor in a sense. And you also have different uh, fleets, such as the EV fleet vans. And you have Dragonfly, you have Battery, and you have their manufacturing. Now, I did talk in the last video about their manufacturing of this kind of uh, new place, the state of the art facility that has been actually up and running, supposedly, and that still has a bit of some final touches, but you're able to click here on more information and you get to see the actual location. I did go on towards the last video and talked about it, that it's not actually in Tanaka, it's in Tanaka Resorts. So that's a bit different and it's currently working on creating the necessary infrastructure required and machinery support to large scale EV production that will begin in quarter three, 2024. But if you were to take a look into satellite images, the structure is actually standing there. Uh, just the insides might need a little bit of changing here and there as they grow up. Now, Mullen itself is a Southern California based automotive company that owns and partners with several synergistic businesses working towards the unified goal of creating clean and scalable energy solutions and electrical vehicles. And they're now publicly traded as of November 5th, 2021. I also talked about two videos ago, I believe, how Mullen is not just a first kind of company that just right off the bat woke up one day and said, hey, we want to be AV, but they have some rich history that goes all the way back to the early 2000s. So I watched my video two videos ago, actually, and last video was about manufacturing. This video will be a little bit into institutional buyers and as well technical analysis to kind of give an update into trading. I'm yet to compile a video about financial uh cheats and comparisons from the from right now for Mullen compared to previous uh, companies like Tesla at that stage but right now I'm still waiting in for the latest update for the 10q form for the first quarter and then we're able to compare it beautifully to previous uh, companies in the same road now they have different press releases and a lot of them has been attention from media, including Yahoo Financial Life, uh, Car Buzz, and as well, financial website Insider Monkey. There is other companies as well out there that are trying to do the same thing. But if you do recall, I think three videos ago, we did mention that they have scheduled deliveries this year of their EV flat, uh, fleet for vans and as well for the Mullen 5 as well. And if you were to go towards Twitter, you start to see a little bit of that news that is going towards retail. So for instance, this one here, the unknown EV just beat Rivian and Lincoln for the top all electric SUV at the LA Auto Show. Uh, there has been some attention as well on news such as Yahoo News. It is starting to trend on Google Trends and they're starting to pick up a lot of attention from retail and from people overall. Now, this includes as well institutional buyers. Take a look into two institutional buyers that just joined the game. Pizer, Terrans S, that basically changed their percentage of holding shares from around 158% or from around 11.4 million shares to around 29.4 million shares. So that's a big chunk. You also have Yasusa Holdings, which previously did not have any shares and added around 19.8 million shares. And these are bigger names. Smaller institutional buyers have been adding, but nothing so much in March so far. Now, we do have some financials in terms of shares outstanding and shares interest. I do believe shares outstanding is not currently up to date, for instance. There has been some questioning about it because you see here 17.47, here 34.9. So we're yet to see in the next basically PR uh, relating towards shares outstanding, the current shares outstanding. Gross margins hasn't been bad, 11.75, but a lot of these need to be filled. Short interest as a percentage of flow is 8.65. Uh, right here, you're not able to see a uh, short float, but 8.65 is still somewhat healthy, but it can easily change day per day as it jumped in the last trading day around 
Now, before moving on towards technical analysis, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button and leave your notification buttons on for this channel. Last time I did talk about manufacturing, so you can watch that video. It's in the link. This, in the link of that video is in the description below. Don't forget to drop a like and you can join our Discord if you'd like to do so. The link is in the description as well. From a technical analysis, Mullen has really been enjoying a massive push from the 50s. And it jumped all the way to almost three dollars and stayed up there, dropped to three eighty or two eighty eight with the highs of three twenty. So it's a really good push that it's seen. Now the ten SMA is climbing closer to where the thirty MA is, and that's a bullish sign as well. And the price point is finally above the fifty SMA, making it really bullish. The fifty SMA is at two twenty eight, and that's really showing a really nice price movement there. The average directional index is sitting at thirty one, so that's really showing a nice push. The William percent R is showing a bit more uh, demand than there is supply. So it's considered quote unquote overbought. This is very similar to what you would see with the RSI. Now you can see this one as overbought, meaning in that at some point it's going to stabilize and it's, it's normal. It dropped or jumped around 18% in the last trading day. You expect it to have less volatility at some point. But the good news out of this one is that there's more buyers than there are or more demand than there are the suppliers. So that is a good thing and it really keeps pushing the stock price up until it stabilizes. And what you see here on the William percent R is basically again uh, similar to what you would see in RSI. The MACD histogram is showing that it's continuing to push on the strength and that's a really good thing. You're starting to see momentum hitting 190 and that's a really nice level to be at at this level. It's one of the highest moments it's been, I would say almost forever. So, or since it came into trading. So that's a good thing. It has really good momentum with it. Stochastic fast and stochastic slow are piling upwards and that's also looking something like very beautiful. You're starting to see that the stock price is uh, gaining traction and that looks amazing on its own. Now, the moving averages are also climbing back upwards. The Bollinger Bands are between 246 and 3 cents. Moving average bands are climbing upwards. It's still further away from where the stock price is sitting at 137 and 112, but it's still gaining traction. Now the Fibonacci retracements onto this one is expecting to see the biggest resistance at 415 in its way, and then 640, 821, 1003, 1262, and 1591. The support is at 52 cents. From a price line action, you're able to see a significant resistance at 292, 361, going higher to around 491, and then 589, and then around 7.10, and then 8.31, and you kind of get the point at 10.02. Now, definitely there is a bit of a resistance at the 3.02 as it did uh, kind of get rejected on there, but it's really closer to around 3.25 rather than the 3.02, or I believe it was 3.20, my bad. Now, in terms of supports, there are a few, and a very important ones to that matter. The first support is around 2.70, and then below there around 246 and then below there around 221 hopefully you don't see that for a long time 191 or 199 is the next support followed by 177 151 and you get to start seeing that there's a bunch of supports underneath them 133 one dollar sharp and then 76 cents so this is really moving around trying to show a massive uptrend as you get to see here with the price line action and as well you can easily draw a trend line so if you go to one hour let's say trends and you go all the way for the last month you're starting to see that there is somewhat of an uptrend that might not be very focused into a specific channel but it's still an uptrend and that uptrend kind of broke on the 14th of march and had its own uptrend again so that is a very interesting multiple uptrends and an uptrend and it kind of accelerated up now this might be a bit of a dangerous sign because it can easily drop to the main channel but nonetheless over the long term it looks like it has a lot of attention you got to be very careful buying around 320 so it is you might we might want to consider if you bought around the 50 cents to at least take your capital out and let the basically house's money play and so that might be a good thing to do uh, but overall you're able to see an acceleration and with it, this acceleration it might be a little bit of a dangerous thing because you can easily see pullbacks which are healthy you get to see here it jumped to 269 pull back to 218 that might not feel like a lot but that is still quite a lot of money if you're dealing with big money and then it jumped and broke that channel of 320 and might easily drop to around 250 240 before it jumps again so that's how a channel works what do you think about the sticker? Make sure to write down in the comments below.
Make sure to subscribe and leave vacation on and have a good one.